Hello and welcome to our lesson video notes for 1-2 linear measure. And here's just a list of our standards we're going to be covering. Uh, no precise definitions of angle, circle, perpendicular line, parallel line, line segment, that's the key one in this lesson, based on undefined notions of point line, point in line, distance along a line, and distance around a circular arc. We are focusing on the line segment part of this. We're talking about linear measurement today. Okay, and then here's another standard we're covering, and we will be attending to precision in this, les in this lesson. We'll talk about more about that in class also. All right, just to kind of cover our objectives, previously we identified and modeled points, lines, and planes, and now we're going to take those and move a little bit further, and we're going to measure segments, and we're going to calculate with those measures. Okay, so here's your vocabulary. You should have written in your vocab notebook. If you have any questions about that, uh, you can ask me during class. Otherwise, you should have these definitions filled out. And so we're going to use some of those definitions in our examples. All right, let's talk about, about example one. Okay, we're going to talk about length of segments in metric units, metric being centimeters, millimeters, so on and so forth. So we're going to find each of these lengths using the ruler that I provided for you here. So we're all using the same scale. All right, we have centimeters, one, two, three, four, five. We've zoomed in a little bit. So let's find the length of segment AB using this ruler. So here's how we do this. Okay, this segment bar above AB distinguishes AB from being a line and a line segment. Remember, a segment is a part of a line with endpoints, in this case, A and B. So here's how we're going to say this. We're going to say segment AB has a length written just as AB without any notation above it. Anytime you write two letters together, like that, you're referring to a length. And that length is a little bit beyond four and a little bit shy of five centimeters. Well, it's more than halfway. Okay, remember that centimeters are broken up into millimeters between each one. That appears to be about seven or eight millimeters. Okay, so we can say this is about 4.8 centimeters. Okay, in part B, they've written millimeters as our scale. Okay, millimeters, not centimeters. So this is actually two millimeters. Okay, so make sure we understand that correctly. And so we are going to actually need those tick marks beyond that to, for our decimal points. So for A, B, this, in this case, we're going to say it's 2.123 millimeters. That's a nice thing about metric units. They use the decimal system. It's everything in base 10, so we can find those easily enough. Let's talk about example two, however. We're using standard units of measure, so we're understanding that these are inches, okay, for both of them. So why don't you take a look at A and B and see if you can find answers to that on your own. Okay, if you need any more time, go ahead and pause the video, but you should have an understanding of what these measurements are. So in this case, A, B, is between 1 and 2 inches, and we're not going to say that's 1.3. That is nowhere near 1.3. In fact, inches use fractional values, so between 1 and 2 exactly in the middle is 1 and a half. And then halfway between 1 and 1 and a half is 1 and a fourth. Okay, so each one of these markings is a fourth of an inch, and so we have 1, 2, 3, fourths, so AB has a length one and three-fourths inches. Or we could say the decimal value is 1.75, but it's a lot easier to write the fraction. Okay, so let's take a look here. Now, if every quarter of an inch is marked out like this, then halfway between zero and one-fourth is one-eighth, and halfway between zero and one-eighth, those little tiny marks are a sixteenth of an inch. So if I was to count by this, I would count up 16 marks before I got to a one full inch. So here we are a little ways beyond one inch. This is a one and a fourth. So halfway between one and one and a fourth is one and an eighth. So AB in this case is one and one eighth of an inch. All right, that's how we measure linear units using either metric or standard units. But for the most part, we won't be dealing with actual measurements in this lesson. We're going to be talking about values assigned to these segments, and that requires that we understand what the word between means in terms of geometry. In this case, M is between P and Q if and only if P, Q, and M are all collinear, 
And then we have this equation that we can write. The length of PM plus MQ, so this distance plus this distance, equals the whole thing. And later on we're going to get into something called the segment addition postulate. I'll remind you of this when we learn what a postulate actually is, but it says the same thing. And basically that just means that if I add two parts of something together, I get the whole value. So this part plus this part equals the whole thing. The word between, in this case, does not mean halfway. M is not halfway between, M, uh, between P and Q, it's just between there, anywhere. M could be all the way right next to Q and it's still between P and Q. Think about the, a number line. If I had a number line like this, and I assign 0 here and 10 here, and the 9 would be there, 9 is between 0 and 10. Okay, so we could say 9 is between 0 and 10, and that's still true. It's not halfway between 0 and 10, but it is between. So let's apply that in example three. Let's find the measurements by adding these two pieces together. So we know that xt plus ty must equal xy by that definition of betweenness that we talked about. Because it says t is between x and y. So that means I can just substitute values in that I know. xt is 3.2, ty is 5.7, so if I add those, I should get xy. So if I add those together, 3 and 5 make 8, 2 and 7 make 0.9, nothing to carry there, so it's 8.9 centimeters is our unit of measure, without actually measuring that. All right. And similarly, if I were to know the whole thing and only know one part of this, I could find the other part by subtracting. And we'll get to some examples like that in our assignment in class. All right, so let's go ahead and work on example four, writing and solving equations to find these measurements. And so we're going to have to draw a figure to help represent this because we're not given a figure. Okay, so to draw our figure, we need to read this and understand it. We're going to find the value of x and the length of mn, those are the two unknowns we have, if n is between m and p. That means they're all collinear, n is somewhere between m and p, so I'm going to draw a segment and label the endpoints M and P. And we're told the rest of the information. I don't want to put point N until I know about where it's going to fall. I don't want to put it exactly in the middle. You can, but I'd rather have this be a little more um, informative if I can. We're told that MN, so MN is 6x minus 7. NP is 2x plus 3. Now it's a little bit difficult to understand this because they're using these variables, but I'm going to assume the mn might be a little bit longer. If I'm wrong, that's okay. I'm going to put n right there. And I'm going to label mn 6x minus 7 and np 2x plus 3 and then the whole thing is 60 units of measure long. So what we have, remember that equation we could write, that mn plus np equals mp. And now all I have to do is substitute the values that I know. mn gets this expression, 6x minus 7, plus np, which is 2x plus 3, equals mp, which I know is 60. Well now I simply have an equation that I can simplify and solve for x, and then when I know x, that's part of my answer, I can plug back into this part here, to find mn. So I'm going to let you pause the video and take time to solve this equation for x, work it out until you have an equation for x, a value, and then we'll plug it back in to find out what mn is. Alright, this is what we should get for our value of x. x should equal 8. That means I can take my expression for mn, 6x minus 7, and plug 8 in for x. So I'm going to do 6 times 8 minus 7, which is 48 minus 7, which is 41. Sorry, that box worked out a little tricky. So x equals 8, mn equals 41. All right, 
Let's take a quick look about what we understand about congruent segments. Congruent segments have the same measure. That's your definition of congruent segments. This symbol is what we use to read is congruent to. Okay, that symbol means congruent. And then red slashes on the figure, or they might be another color. We just make these little tick marks on the figure, mark those segments as congruent. So our example here is that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Now here's something you need to remember. Okay, lengths are equal, and we'll use the equal sign to represent that. Segments are congruent. Okay, and we'll use our congruent symbol when we talk about the figures. So it is correct to say that AB equals CD and segment AB is congruent to segment CD. This may not seem like a big deal, but it is definitely not correct to say that segment AB is equal to segment CD. Okay, that's, that's like saying five is blue. It, it just doesn't have a whole lot of meaning. And we also don't say that the lengths are congruent. Okay, when I write it without the notation above, I mean length, so I must use equal. Length is a numeric value, so we can say numbers are equal. These are figures on a chart or on a diagram, and the figures can be congruent because they have equal length. We will talk a lot more about that as we go on this year. All right, to finish out this lesson, I want you to come up with some answers to these thinking questions. One, how many points are there between any two endpoints of a segment? Try and come up with an answer there. Two, if point M is between point C and D, then C, D is always, sometimes, or never greater than C, M, or M, D, and then give an explanation. And then number three, if point smiley face is between points heart and star, and the three points are collinear, then what statement can be made? Okay, and this one could be a little bit tricky, but I want you to come up with your answers to the thinking questions and have them ready to discuss with a, uh, another classmate when we show up to class the next day. This concludes our lesson over linear measure. We'll talk some more about this in class, but make sure you get these thinking questions answered before you come into class, and we will start the assignment in the classroom.